number properties on the GMAT. The single most tested topic on the GMAT quantitative section is something called number properties. However, number properties is a vast category on the GMAT, so we'll narrow down what exactly you need to know about it. When I say the word numbers, what do you think? If the only thing that comes to mind is one, two, three, four, five, then such thinking will get you in trouble on the GMAT. If when I say the word numbers, you immediately think not only those numbers, but also their negative counterparts, as well as zero, positive and negative fractions, positive and negative decimals, square roots, pi, and so on, then you are thinking like a mathematician. One very simple trick for success on GMAT math problems. Whenever you hear the word number, automatically force yourself to think of every possibility. Numbers live on what grade school teachers call the number line and what mathematicians call the real number line, a continuous infinity of values. The more you think about the idea of continuous infinity, the more it boggles the mind. The real number line is a reel of perfect fairness. The number negative 137 eighths is just as much a legitimate number of the number line as four. It's particularly important when you're choosing numbers to plug in to test numbers of all categories. For example, when testing an algebraic expression in a data sufficiency question. Categories of numbers. In addition to knowing the infinite implications concerning the word number, two further terms you should know are integers, negative one, negative two, zero, one, two, three, four, and positive integers, one, two, three, four. On rare occasions, the GMAT will also have a question concerning negative integers, which are just the negative counterparts of positive integers. And while zero is an integer, it is neither positive nor negative. The word integer is etymologically related to the word integrity. Both come from the Latin word for wholeness. Each integer is, as it were, a unique wholeness, a complete package in and of itself. The parts between the wholes can be represented in two ways, fractions and decimals. Both can be either positive or negative. Mathematicians have both systems for these partial numbers because each system has its own advantages under certain circumstances. Technically, fractions and decimals don't cover exactly the same turf because fractions include only rational numbers, whereas decimals include both rational and irrational numbers, an infinitely bigger set. So even though there's an infinity of fractions between zero and one, as well as an infinity of decimals between zero and one, the infinity of decimals is infinitely bigger than the infinity of fractions. One of the many mind-boggling things about the continuous infinity of the real number line. Irrational numbers include roots, which the GMAT loves to test. More on positive integers. The positive integers one, two, three, four are also called the counting numbers. But positive integers seems to be the term that the GMAT consistently uses. These numbers have a bunch of special properties just to themselves. Primes, odd and even, multiples, factors, remainders, etc. One of the hardest things the GMAT will ask you to do with positive integers is to count. This may sound obvious, but here, counting means problems like, there are three boys in blue shirts, five boys in green shirts, and four girls in blue dresses. How many ways can they sit in seven seats if, you get the point. Those arrangements and sets and combinations, that's what the GMAT will have you count. Also, remember the trick of inclusive counting, which the GMAT loves to test. In conclusion, number properties is a huge topic. If you follow the points in this video, you'll have a good understanding of the lay of the land. Don't forget to subscribe for more GMAT tips and information. And give this video a like if you found it helpful.